So with everything that I've been posting, it's mainly been tutorials and all that type of stuff. And I never got around to doing a quick overview of CM11 on uh, the Fire HD6 4th edition, which is also available for the Fire HD7. They're practically the same devices. I'm about to just boot into Team Win Recovery Project. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to really go through the whole process as to install CM11 in this video but the main idea is that you've got to get onto a 4 or a KitKat bootloader so that you can install TeamWin Recovery Project and then go ahead and install CM11. So you can do this a couple ways. The, the way I just did it is from uh, using the AFTV2 tools which allows you to write directly to the device from the preloader so that you can install the bootloader and the recovery. It takes about an hour total. I'll leave a tutorial for that. I actually just made a video showing how you can unbrick the Fire uh, HD6 with that method, but the problem is that with the latest Amazon update, they've blocked the preloader command. So if you're on the latest firmware, unfortunately it won't work. So if you're on the latest firmware, you'll, you're going to have to downgrade to a 4.0.3 and you can downgrade by going into the default recovery and doing the ADB sideload command whenever you get into sideload mode from the default recovery. What we're going to do right now is just we're going to go ahead and install CM11. So I'm going to transfer these files. Let's go ahead and transfer over the necessary files. We've got the CM11 actual ROM, the 4.4 Pico gaps, and SuperSU. Let's go ahead and copy this. Go over to the Arial device, internal storage, and paste it in. Now let's go ahead and actually flash the ROM itself. If you want, you could do a backup of the current ROM. I'm not going to do that. Um, but what we're going to do now is just wipe the Goblet Cache, Cache, Data, and System and press back. Now go into install and from the SD card scroll down to the bottom choose the CM11 zip itself and choose flash. And this will take a little bit of time to install the ROM. Alright, after it is finished installing we can go ahead and press back and let's go and install Gaps, Google Apps, take a little bit of time as well. And finally, let's install SuperSU so we can have root access on the ROM. And everything was successful, so now we can reboot the system. Here you can see the loading screen that CyanogenMod has been installed and is booting up. And it didn't take too long to come up to this setup screen. So now we can go through this and set up Wi-Fi and sign in to Google. And we can sign in to Google. Now the setup is complete. So there are some slight problems with this ROM. Mainly the camera doesn't work. If you try to take a picture, it's just going to freeze up. And the OMX for video is not working properly. So YouTube YouTube works, but certain playback features are going to have issues. It's noted that Netflix doesn't work and Facebook videos don't work. So the installation doesn't come with too many apps. It's basically just bare minimum. Uh, just the basic system apps like clock and calendar and email. and As well as the Google apps for the Play Store. And since it was Pico, it only did the Play Store. And, and the other Google backend type stuff. And then there's the SuperSue for root that we've got installed, a terminal, 
and just some basic apps like that. So let's go into settings and see what type of stuff is there. We've got the basic Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage. We've got some lock screen customization. Choose the security between slide, pattern, pin, and password. And then there are also themes, which is one good thing about, about CyAngineMod, is that you can download themes from the Play Store and apply them to the ROM. From here, there's all sorts of options for the icons and fonts and wallpapers from the downloaded themes that you can adjust. Now there are some status bar settings. You can change the clock to the center or hidden. We've got, we can adjust it from circle to text for the battery to, or hidden or portrait. We've got brightness control for the status bar so you can go like this and just adjust the brightness. Notification drawer, this would be the notifications in the panel, just some settings. There's quick panel settings. You can have quick pull down from the right or left. So right now it's for the right. So if you swipe from the right, it pulls it down all the way instead of just opening the notifications. It opens the tiles. You can adjust the tiles here. Adding new tiles, there's a bunch of new ones in here and you can move around these tiles which are in your status bar. Now there's also heads up notifications which are the ones where it would come down and sort of interact on the screen rather than just showing in the status bar. You can also have a quick access ribbon in the status bar so that you have some options here as well as in the tiles got basic sound settings and you can use a DSP manager for display we can add rotation for 180 degrees you can change font size daydream now in buttons one thing I like to adjust is in the power menu you can add screenshot here you can just see all the things on the power menu we can also adjust the quick launch shortcuts from the home button so down here would we could make it kill the app. From here we could make it select application. You can choose between all these different things. Select an app like the Play Store. And over here you can make it do something as well. So whenever you hold up on the home button, you have those options there. There's also arrow keys while typing option which is enabled by default so in the keyboard you can see there's these two buttons here that if you're typing something you can adjust the cursor and move it over so move it over left or right and then there's the basic storage battery apps profiles location security privacy language count state and time accessibility printing and developer options which is enabled from triple tapping on the build number. So let's go through the developer settings real quick. You can see there's the advanced reboot when unlocking include options in the power menu for rebooting into recovery, bootloader, or performing a soft reboot. That could be nice. So if you press reboot, you can choose between soft reboot, recovery, or bootloader. You can enable power menu bug reports, show touches, it's pretty common. Most of these are pretty common options. Most of the performance options aren't going to work, like the processor options. It's most likely not going to work with a locked bootloader like we have. Well, I mean, there's not too much to it. It's a basic ROM. It should run well besides the video and camera. Um, glitching out but it's good good ROM should run quick for basic usage and anything you'll need it for thank you all for watching if you like these types of videos please subscribe